yeah beauty industry is very very cutthroat that way in terms of content right where if you type makeup on instagram as a hashtag you will see like 20000 influencers just putting out content every video has 20 products in it so as a brand you get lost in that content so how do you stand out so yeah it's not easy for sure and i didn't actually realize myself how important content was till very recently i thought you know putting up on instagram if you say oh we are launching and you know those static sort of posts it should do it i just have to be consistent about it right every week i put up five posts on instagram and facebook and it should work it didn't work it doesn't work. you just end up spending so much more time creating these graphics and stuff but that's not speaking to a consumer right it's not talking at all to a consumer what a consumer sees is a poster and he, and he look like what do i do with this poster right like show me something that excites me keep me engaged and that i realized a lot later in life and now looking back i feel like even if i was with my edtech company earlier even with you know the, the the digital agency that i was with earlier i would have made a lot more different decisions in terms of content so yeah it's not easy to churn out all of the content um initially i used to uh, create my own canva posts etc and have kind of best post every every day one content piece of content because used to go out there was no engagement for a really long time very low engagement then what we did was um, yeah i think the other thing that we actually did covid or during covid in 2021 when we realized that us was the market for us and we were like how do we break into us we don't have influencers there we don't have a product out we actually want to even into production at that point in time I, i had already sold my 300 pieces of 3d printed product mm-hmm. and i was like how do you enter this huge market where ad costs are through the roof you know just entering and putting your ad on facebook was not going to cut it for us we needed faces who were trying our product we needed money to first make those products so that we can give it to those faces how do we do all of that so then we realized that uh, there is this audience on kickstarter on crowdfunding platforms where they are always interested in trying new products out so we went on kickstarter kickstarter typically traditionally is a very male dominated uh, sort of uh platform where you have mostly yeah men who are backing projects which are more to do with uh, gaming uh they are more to do with tech gadgets like watches etc so it's very very geeky get tech gadgets sort of a market and we're like we will be so odd you know sitting there as a beauty product meant for women but we took the plunge we were like we don't have there is no other crowdfunding a platform out there specifically for women beauty products so we took our chances we saw a few past products there projects there which were on beauty and we saw that there was fair amount of traction on those projects so we took a chance we went on kickstarter and i think that was the best decision we made like ever we went on kickstarter we we got about 1500 orders from there uh, we raised uh, over 114000 singapore dollars on our project which gave us enough resources to then go into production so that's what a crowdfunding campaign does right so you pre sell uh, your products people pre order it and then you take that money you go into production and then you uh, deliver it so this was a great marketing campaign for us i would think it sort of put us right in the middle of innovation in yeah. the us Uh, even if it was not the women who were buying it, it was their boyfriends and husbands <laughs> who were buying it, who yeah. were already It's buying. <laughs> yeah, who were already buying products, innovative products themselves. So they were buying it for their girlfriends and wives. Yeah. So we realized that this was. A, it just happened to be, luckily, that it was a great place to be in for us as an innovative beauty tech brand. So that sort of set the wheel going for us, and we realized again that a lot of influencers bought. our products on that kickstarter campaign we had no idea who bought it we just shipped everything out and then we realized that there's organically all of this content happening on the internet about us so i think in jan of 2022 when we shipped out all of our products we started a huge uh, surge in content on the internet also what happened uh, at the same time was l'oreal they launched their own similar product under ysl brand um it's called Rouge Sur Mesure uh it's basically again a DIY lipstick kit but it's priced at 500 US dollars wow. so very expensive luxury product for sure and they launched it uh, in Jan as well 
okay. and we launched in Jan as well. So we just happened, and they had all of this content right going on on the internet because they could afford hiring these influencers for millions of dollars. So they had all of this content growing, and we had our backers from Kickstarter who then started commenting all of these content. and they started commenting oh this is for $500 why don't you check out go play cosmetics they sell it for like $70 and it's much wider variety of colors that you can get it's uh, so we became the underdog i think it was the uh, right place at the right time for us so there was definitely a lot of luck factor for us in this entire game but i think the good decision for us was going kickstarter in the us uh, so that was a very good decision for us content then just organically started flowing because these people started buying more and more they saw the comments and they're like i can't afford a 500 dollar ysl product let me just try the group cosmetics at 70 dollars first so that's how we got our first sort of audiences in our first customers in then they started creating content and that's how we went from there and of course then that peaks right at a certain point it peaks and then you see the content stops working after a point then you're like oh what do we do now that's when the second phase happened for us as far as content is concerned where we were like okay we are now actively talking to influencers uh come to us we will give you packages try it out if you like it post it if you don't like it don't post it so it was sort of like that so we didn't spend any money we did not pay any influencers we just said uh, hey why don't you try it out what we had at that point in time was data we had data regarding our influencers influencers as in people who had already organically posted that they were getting 50% more views on videos that they were creating about go play cosmetics than their regular videos so we used this data to negotiate with our influencers we said that hey i don't think we need to pay you because you're already getting 50% more views because of the products that you're uh, covering for us it's a new product people are already curious about it right so i don't need to pay you because you're going to get more views on our on your videos about us so we are what we're going to do is we will send you free products so that's how we then got a lot of content more uh, because we used our data you know to back us up to tell that hey we don't have the budget for it just take our product and create content so that was sort of phase one of uh, influencer marketing for us where we were not paying people again that trends to once once the industry is now they're like okay now we know what go play cosmetics is about we know what the lip kit is about now we need to then start incentivizing people to start doing content for us now we are sort of in phase 2 where we are now paying people to do our uh, it's it's more paid pro, you know promotions of sorts but thankfully then tiktok happened for us so in tiktok we just hire a content creator she churns out content for you and tiktok works very well organically at least for now so you use the right uh, words you use the right captions you use the right uh, hooks and it will just go viral and that's what happened with us we were consistent with the uh, our content creator creating those videos for us and the content then started just uh, it was an avalanche for us and suddenly we realized that it's working on itself we don't really need to push anything at all uh so yeah so tiktok for now has uh, become a number one sort of place where we sell and our audiences find us but yeah it's a lot of i think hustling and hacky ways of doing things and of course luck works in your favor that's great Thank you.